next we will discuss few definitions which are related to inflation so these definitions are first one is base effect so base effect can be what is the base if i am saying that you have scored 50 marks so unless and until there is a base i cannot say 50 marks are good or bad if it is out of 50 it is very good if it is out of 100 maybe it is good if it is out of 500 it is bad so unless and until you have a base you cannot tell whether your marks are good or bad but what if the base is changing in that scenario the base the change in base may change the definition of good or bad the same thing happens in case of inflation so suppose this is the value of WPI 100 150 whatever the thing is and this is year so we discussed how we measure inflation so inflation in for example May 2016 is equal to WPI in May 16 minus WPI in May 15 upon WPI in May 15 multiplied by 100. So this is how we measure. So suppose the value of WPI in May 2016 is this one and the value of WPI in May 2015 is this one and this is what the average rate of inflation of last four years this is what the rate of inflation is so with respect to this the inflation is negative we can say the inflation is negative in May 2016 but from the perspective of the average it is very high this is the rate of inflation so this can happen that in the market the prices are very high because actual inflation is very high but the method we are adopting to calculate inflation is by comparing with the last year value of WPI so using that method <coughs> the value of inflation is coming negative so theoretically inflation is negative but in the market the value of inflation is uh, the value of the price of the commodities is very high so that is known as base effect then we have the next term that is known as a deflation and disinflation in few books the def it is written the deflation and disinflation are same thing but they are totally different thing deflation and disinflation <coughs> in case of deflation the demand of the just like deflation is just opposite of inflation in inflation it is a persistent increase in the prices of commodities it is the persistent decrease goods and services but the problem is when there is persistent decrease in prices of goods and services along with this the national income all these other parameters the output all this is also decreasing so it means it is bad because if all this thing is decreasing ultimately it is going to cause recession so it means deflation is not good for any economy on the other hand disinflation means negative rate negative increase in rate of inflation it is not negative inflation negative increase in rate of inflation which means suppose earlier the rate of inflation was 8% and now the rate of inflation has become 6% so there is a negative increase in rate of inflation of minus 2% but still the inflation is positive only so this is known as disinflation so under this disinflation it has decreased but it has not decreased this national not decreased national income or output and all these things so it means it is desirable it is good for any economy so disinflation is nothing but decrease in the rate of inflation and deflation is persistent decrease in the prices of goods and services deflation is just the opposite of inflation then we have is a structural or bottleneck inflation 
structural or bottleneck inflation means if suppose there is some structural or bottleneck problems in the economy for example if you don't have any labor if there is no connectivity so if there is no connectivity between this rural areas and urban areas so whatever the perishable items which are being uh, this thing grown by this rural farmers that will not be sold out in urban area so the demand of all these items will be increase and when their demand increase it is going to cause inflation so if there is no connectivity and all these things no labor if there is a structural deficiency in the economy so that such type of inflation is known as structural or bottleneck inflation next we have is reflation reflation is nothing but inflation during recovery time we discussed 2008 to 2012 there was a recession and once this recession is over once again the demand has increased so when the demand is going to increase there will be in inflation so after recession whatever inflation comes that inflation is termed as reflation so during the recovery time of the business cycle the inflation of that time is known as reflation then we have skewflation or skewed inflation it means skewed plus inflation it means the prices of only few commodities has increased drastically but the prices of other commodities is not that high that is known as skewflation skewed inflation only prices of few goods and services has increased drastically but majority of other goods and services their prices not that high then we have stagflation again it means stagnation plus inflation we discussed that inflation is usually coupled with growth but think about a situation when there is no growth in the economy no demand or no increase in money supply so there should not be any inflation because when growth is there so to overcome growth you have to produce something and growth is the consequence of uh, increased demand so suppose this relation is not there inflation growth is not there but still there is inflation so how it is possible due to external factors suppose tomorrow there is a war between saudi arabia and iran so in that case the price of the crude oil which we are importing is going to increase and when that price is going to increase that is going to cause a lot of inflation in india and suppose there is no growth in india but still we are get, we are being affected so if there is no growth in any country still there is inflation in the economy that is known as stagflation usually stagflation takes place because of these external factors in 1990s 1970s when there was a war in all this arab, arab areas because of that only there was inflation in india so due to external forces usually stagnation comes but otherwise inflation and growth they are coupled then we have misery index and just like we discuss the philip curve which shows the relationship between rate of inflation and unemployment misery index is nothing but the mathematical addition of this and unemployment so the mathematical addition of rate of inflation plus rate of unemployment is known as misery index not much used in developing countries but it is being used in developed countries it shows it, it acts as a report card of the present government then we have agriflation agriflation is nothing but inflation due to agricultural commodities that is known as agriflation then this is the new term lowflation recently coined by imf specifically for european countries persistent deflation or if there is deflation for many for consecutive quarters that situation has been called by imf as lowflation so if there is persistent deflation in the economy for multiple quarters then such a situation was called by imf as lowflation so lowflation because a recent term coined by imf can be asked in the exam 
telling you again low inflation is nothing but the persistent deflation for many quarters that is known as low inflation coined by imf for european countries i, th I think this is what i have topics related to inflation but still if you have some doubts you can ask me so the next topic that we are going to cover will be public finances uh, before that we can discuss some questions of uh, inflation as well as we can discuss the questions of monetary policy also thank you